Hello, and in this video I'm going to describe how it's possible to implement a licensing system into a .NET application which uses an external server to validate a license or a serial key. I'm going to use serial key manager as an example. Uh, as you can see, what I have in front of me is an article which I, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to put a link below this video so you can read more if you like. But uh, the point of this video is to describe a step-by-step -step tutorial how you can use Serial Key Manager to perform this task. So let's start by logging in. And of course, if you don't have an account, you should register and create an account. And there are uh, different ways you can get... Um, you can uh, actually, if you just press log in, you can use either a Microsoft account, a Twitter account, Facebook account, or a Google account. But since I already have a, a local account, I'm going to use that and uh, uh oh my that's correct to do this. So let's start by uh, opening an integrated development environment that allows us to develop .NET uh, applications or applications that target the .NET framework. And my choice is Visual Studio. Of course, there are other integrated development environments you can use. But let's stick to, the, stick to this. So I'm going to limit myself to a console application. But of course, you can extend this to uh, uh, Windows applications, or uh, there is no limit to them, the types of applications that you can use, this, or where you can implement this technique. So first, we create a project. I mean, this is the standard procedure. We go to the console app. And uh, we can. We don't, I don't think we have to be creative here with a, a specific name for the project. So once this is done, so as you can see, it's it's loading. Uh, while it's loading, uh, it's already done. Uh, I'm going to copy a code here, which you can find. As I said, it's provided below this video. So if I just copy this part here. If I copy this part and implement, put it in between the main, uh, and of course I have to, uh, you might get some, you have to get, I think you, you'll have to include system.net uh, as a reference, or you have to have that namespace, so I think, yeah, yeah, this looks fine, great, and uh, as you can see here, there are three fields, and it's also set, it also says here in the article, there are three fields that you have to uh, complete. And the first is called PID, the second one is UED, and the third one is HSUM. And uh, there is a, a fourth one as well, which is SID, but that's for the actual serial key. So that you can put to be, um, it can be a text box, it can be any kind of input uh, in your application. A use, a input that user can use to enter their serial key. So as I said here, I'm already logged in into the system and I, what I do is that I press online key validation and I go to... So of course if you haven't done so already, you have to create a new product. So let's see, if you go to home page, you create a new product and let's call it um, test123 and the password is hello and I I want to make sure it's public and please make sure that you put this field to be public because online key validation in CL key manager is not it's an option so if you don't want uh, to be able to do that for, for a specific project if you want to restrict the project from and just uh, um, avoid uh, this feature then you simply cross this box away so but I want to use Online key validation, so I check this box. Uh, we can have some sort of description, and we create a project or a product. So as you can see, here I have a, my new product with no serial keys. But just for the for this example, I'm going to create. Uh, let's see, we can create five keys, I guess, or we actually need only one, but I can create five, and we can limit them to 30 days and these are my test test keys 
so that's great. So as you can see it's done and uh, now what I do is that I go back to the home page so that's your the main control panel and you press online key validation. Now as you can see you have two projects to choose from and uh, these are the projects that are set to be public. So please note if you can't find your project in the product validation tab it must be uh, set to be not public. But let's use our test project and uh, these fields we keep empty or it doesn't really matter what we put here and we simply press get the code. So here I have the code. And now let's uh, just for the example for this example add a new field here or actually no we we can actually just use uh, notepad uh, in this example. So the fields that are required in this case is PID and the PID field you can find here there is a number here called it says 63 so what I do is I just put 63 here uh, UID is uh, 2 and H sum I'm probably just going to copy this number so that I don't uh, don't enter the wrong number because that's quite important and uh, the rest I, I don't care about so and then let's just close this down for a moment and uh, this is basically it it's done and uh, so what you do now is that you you go to so let's see we can actually if we just want to see if this works I can go back to the product tab and go to test the, the project and I uh, get a key or let's take this one the second key I copy the key and uh, as you can see I have to replace it with uh, this key here and then I start and as you can see the key is valid but I also want to show you the power of using an external server or the the big advantage because this is not an offline based key validation method it's a online based because what I can do now is I can press a blocky key so if I figure out that someone has um, illegally received this key or whatever maybe shared it on, on a public page and this might vi violate against your agreement license license agreement then what you do is you block the key so now if I do the same thing and I have the same key there I'm hopefully going to get that the key is not valid and uh, as you can see you instantly you can block your the application from using that key and of course you have to see that if I enter something entirely random the key is also going to be uh, it's also going to be not valid here and uh, this this here is a really good way of uh, kind of putting control and t and uh, controlling your application even when it's distributed over uh, a large network of users so you can still keep which keys can be uh, uh, usable which can be not non usable and so on uh, and uh, I want to show here that if this is uh, not uh, a valid key then it's still going to be valid so so it's important to n note here that even if your uh, key is invalid it, it's based or if it has expired it is still going to be valid through this method sort of so when we when we check the key here we only check if it is uh, either if it's blocked or not so we check that and we also check if the key is um, in the database uh, that's it that's what this system uh, or this method allows us to do but if we want to see for instance how 
how old this key is, or maybe if it has expired, because if a key is valid or not, it only tells us if it has been modified, if it has been, if it's not in the database, as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, and uh, if it hasn't been uh, blocked by the system. But otherwise, the key is always going to be valid. So that's that's of a that's of a might be a problem. Although it's quite there is a practical reason why this is not the case, and that is because you might have uh, different features set in your uh, application. So, for instance, I can have feature one to be set to be uh, to be a pro version, and then you don't really want this uh, time count to be a big thing. You just want the time count or the uh, the amount of days you can use the application to be a restriction for uh, for uh, users that have the trial version or any other version of your application. So there is this is the reason why this method is still going to be, tr going to be true, even if the key is uh, has expired. But anyway, that would be uh, described in the second video. But thank you very much for watching, and I hope you will. Uh, try out th what we have learned so far, how to at least try to check and validate the keys through the through this app, your application and uh, the next time we will look at how it's possible to extend this with even more uh, possible variables that we can check uh, to see whether the key should be valid or not valid. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.